In this episode of Con TV, we are talking about Dave Grawl's drumming style in Nirvana's MTV Unplugged performance. Yes, and be sure to like and subscribe for more epic musical content. Now, this might have been Dave's most challenging work yet because at the time, he was just used to playing full force. And so when you watch the performances, you can see how much restraint he has to do it. And he's not quite used to that yet. In fact, it was rumored that Kurt wanted a different drummer to play the performance because Dave would just hit too hard. So one of the stagehands or something uh, took Dave to a music store and picked up lighter sticks. They gave him brushes, which he uses on the first song about a girl. And they also gave him hot rods. Now, the kit that he was using uh, it's not confirmed, but most people speculate that it was a vintage Slingerland. And you can see by the labels that he was using Zildjian's for that performance. And again, it's not confirmed what specific gear he was using. So like I said, that first song that he was playing on used brushes, and that is About a Girl. track he is basically playing straight to the record everything that you hear on there why he only uses brushes on that song i'm not sure i'm not sure if he abandoned them because he just didn't like the way that they feel after that first song maybe he was requested for it and also the way he plays the hi-hat on that song has a nice touch when you do use the brushes and he uses that open hi-hat sound now the next track, Come As You Are, he also plays it pretty much exactly as you hear it on the record, but it's gonna have a lot lighter touch with these hot rods. track Jesus don't want me for a sunbeam he actually plays the drums with his feet just doing the kick and the hi-hat following the bass line because he is playing the bass and singing on that one at the same time a foreshadowing of Dave's brilliance as a multi-instrumentalist now perhaps one of my favorite songs on the album and more famous than the David Bowie version is The Man Who Sold the World. I did a drum cover of this if you wanna see it fully done as note for note accurate as I could. But what I love about this is actually the fills and the ride pattern, how he's kind of copying that sound of a scraper, that pattern, kind of giving it a Latin rock feel and it's gonna sound like this. song Penny Royal T, he shows honorable restraint by not playing at all. He even asks, are you going to do this by yourself? Yeah, do it by yourself. And so we move on to our next track, which is the song Dumb. And this is one of the only songs on the record 
that you see him using sticks. And I think part of the reason is because he needs to get that rim click sound, but he plays very lightly. And like I said earlier, he uh, doesn't really quite know how to play lighter yet. So he actually uh, kind of omits these fingers from being wrapped around the stick. He's still using his arm a lot, but you can see it takes everything he has in his ability to play as light as he can. He also uses a stick, and in the song Polly on the original recording, Chad Channing hits the cymbal four times, and that's the version that appears on Nevermind. There's not even a kick drum backing that up, but Dave does add his brilliant harmonies on that song. on the plane is how that one he actually has to change the way he plays a bit and you can see him using the hi-hat as more of a crash cymbal um, in certain parts just to kind of give it that lighter touch now he did have a crash for the performance but instead of it being up here it was off to the side for reasons that I'm not too sure about. Maybe it was so the camera could see him better, or so there was more room for his microphone, or maybe it was easier for him to play lighter when it was over on this side of the drum kit. In Something in the Way, Kurt asks him to keep time for him while he kind of plays a different pattern on the guitar than he normally does for that song. And so Dave keeps time during the quiet sections, just tapping his leg with the hot rod until it's time for him to come in. Again, playing straight for the record and keeping it nice and laid back. Perhaps the climax of the whole gig is possibly the Meat Puppet songs. Now he kind of gives it that Neil Young on most of those tracks. Apologies, kind of like with I'm on a plane, he has to kind of alter his part a little bit. He can't do all the same loud drum fills, but again, I love the way he plays. And normally on that track, every other backbeat, beat four, it's a two bar phrase, for example, on beat four of the first bar, open hi hat normally, on beat four of the second bar, the snare and the tom normally for that backbeat. Well, he doesn't do the snare and the tom when playing it live, possibly to avoid those overtones. And it's gonna sound a little bit like this. the encore he still has to lay it back 
he kind of trickles in on where did you sleep last night, kind of just playing the ride cymbal and the kick drum on every three beats, giving it a three, four feel at first, but then he jumps into the six, eight groove and still just keeps it very laid back, trying not to push the tempo too much and again, helping to deliver one of Nirvana's most iconic performances of all time. And yes, I mean it. That is one of Nirvana's most famous performances. It's one of my, it actually is my favorite Nirvana performance. It's my favorite uh, record of all time. And it's one of my favorite performances of Dave. He has so many great drumming records like Songs for the Deaf and the Them Crooked Vultures stuff. Obviously his work with Nirvana and the Foo Fighters first two records. He's a great and amazing drummer but this perhaps is one of his most important works as a drummer because that performance of Nirvana is so classic and so iconic. So happy, I believe, 30 year anniversary to this record, which this video is being posted the year that this record turns 30. So again, happy uh, 30 years to one of my favorite albums of all time. Rest in peace, Kurt Cobain. Shout out to Dave Grawl, give this video a like and leave a comment of what one of your favorite Dave Grawl performances on the drums are or what one of your favorite Nirvana tunes or perhaps just let us know what your favorite performance from this album was, all right? So in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening and good night.